Hello, I'm Julia Sirignani for InProfile, and today I'm delighted to have with me Professor George Paxinos. George is a world-renowned neuroscientist who's identified and named more areas of the brain than anyone in history. Although he's published dozens of academic works, his latest offering is fiction. Entitled A River Divided, it's a classic nature versus nurture story with a thrilling twist. Professor George Paxinos, it's lovely to speak with you today. Good day, Julia. With such an esteemed academic career, which has seen you win awards for your research into the workings of our brains, why did you decide to write a novel? Uh, I was motivated by a defeat. Uh, I was involved in environmental causes, in direct action, and in anything I tried, I failed. Um, I attempted to re reintroduce trams to Sydney in the 1980s, uh, but the government disposed of all the tramway legacy, the corridors, the sidings, the workshops, the stabling facilities. Uh, now, of course, many years later, they reintroduced the segment of the uh, pathways that we suggested, uh, but uh, at that time, they were destroying it, and I felt that there was uh, no use in uh, uh, direct action. I also tried to enter the New South Wales Parliament as uh, a member of uh, the Australian Cyclist Party, and there I failed. So I thought if instead of uh, trying direct action, trying to block people from cutting a tree, if I wrote a novel and uh, worked upstream to behavior at attitudes and changed the attitudes of some people toward the environment, I might have a better outcome. It took you 21 years and to Jerusalem and Masada in Israel, Rome, Buenos Aires and the Amazon to research and write this book. Tell us about the story that spans all these places. It is uh, a story of identical twins raised apart, uh, as different artists would uh, sculpt different statues from the same block of marble, different environments will produce different characters, even in identical twins. The story starts with uh, Evelyn, uh, a geneticist and amateur archeologist, discovering in, in uh, Israel what she thought was the remains of Christ, bones and uh, a well-preserved brain. Uh, the consequence of this is uh, the birth of twins, identical twins. Uh, and one of those was raised in Australia, the other in Argentina under totally different conditions in affluent uh, eastern suburbs of Sydney and uh, in uh, uh, the slums of Buenos Aires. The identical twins will meet for a moment only. They don't know the existence of each other or their heritage, and uh, they will be lost forever afterwards. Next to them is a heroic girl who uh, works uh, under the claws of the Argentinian junta, uh, to organize the student environmental resistance. The story is a what if question. That is, what would uh, someone with a genetic endowment of Christ do if you were, if you were present today? Would he join Wall Street or street protests? Mm. What are the key messages, George, in A River Divided, and what do you want the reader to really contemplate? There are many themes in the, the novel, uh, so many, in fact, that when I approached a publisher, he said to me, and on what shelf would I place the book? Until then, I thought the more themes, the more shelves. Uh, it is a, a story about the environment. Uh, it is a, a divided river, the Amazon, consisting of two rivers, 
and it is identical twins that uh, environment has uh, sculpted their personality differently, allowing, of course, for the contribution of uh, genes. And uh, it deals with uh, the power of the brain to deal with uh, the environmental problems it itself has uh, caused. So it asks for a reset of uh, values of uh, religion, of culture, of science. As you explained to us earlier, you, earlier, you're an environmentalist and have for decades been warning about the dangers of climate change. How critical is the moment we find ourselves in, in your opinion? Uh, it is only, not only critical, but it's ironic. In uh, the wake of the largest fires in recorded history, and uh, before the expected elimination of corals in the Great Barrier Reef and elsewhere, when we are in evidence of uh, Australia being the first continent to be degraded by climate change, the Australian government is pairing with Saudi Arabia and Brazil to block international efforts to stabilize uh, the climate. Uh, the, it is time for Australia to switch courses for self-interest and uh, stop being the top exporter of coal uh, to the world. Uh, Australia uh, will uh, flood, will uh, be subject to droughts, will burn. Uh, and uh, this is not going to be only on land. See, the sea around Australia and elsewhere will be simplified. Corals are involved with one third of uh, sea life and it will be a drastic reduction in uh, variability of life in the oceans if they are lost and they will be lost. There's no chance of them surviving two degrees increase in temperature and we are expected to increase by three degrees or more by the end of this century. So what impact do you want to make by writing this book? And how will fiction poke our policy makers to take climate action seriously? I do not know the outcomes of uh, my efforts, but I would think that uh, if such efforts are made in changing attitudes, after all, it would be the only hope we have, education that is, uh, I have been involved in education. I introduced environmental psychology at the University of New South Wales uh, some uh, 35 years ago. It's our only hope. Uh, I don't hold much hope. I think, in fact, there's virtually no hope that uh, a primate like us, given the brain we have, given the baggage we carry, a brain that has the leftover of uh, our reptilian uh, period, snakes, etc., is going to comprehend the problem. Uh, but there is also nothing more important to do than to try to produce a stable environment, a livable environment, uh, that is. Uh, the uh, idea, uh, any other idea we have about equality, justice, pales into its significance if we lose uh, the environmental battle. All other causes uh, are wholly owned subsidiaries of uh, the environmental cause. So with the increasing popularity of this genre, eco-fiction, and more people reading about the natural world, do you think it'll raise awareness about the climate emergency? 
uh, that is the whole uh, education. But uh, again, uh, in education, we are working with what we have, a brain that's predisposed for avarice. Um, that served as well, avarice, uh, in uh, the period that it made sense to grab all uh, the fruit from the trees uh, and um, feed yourself for today and keep uh, for tomorrow. Uh, and not to worry because uh, they, who hadn't reached the limits. Now, there are too many of us for the lifestyle we have. Yeah. And uh, um, I do not know whether the necessary reset of values will happen. You have the paradox that the easiest way that you could make gains on uh, environmental protection would be by having fewer of us. If half of us were around, given everything else the same, there would be half the problem of the environment. But uh, you have uh, religions that are opposing even use of prophylactics that do not harm anybody. In fact, they can protect you from diseases such as HIV and uh, uh, also allow you to plan your family. Uh, but uh, uh, religions uh, are so uh, dogmatic that they will not listen to science. Uh, so uh, whatever it is, the brain is not prepared to see the obvious and uh, is swung by uh, concepts that certainly are not scientific. Science could lead us out of this, but then the community and the leaders have to uh, listen to the scientists. The uh, Dutch do not uh, uh, decide on what dikes to uh, put up and how strong they should be uh, for, uh, by having politicians uh, get, put, uh, consider things together. They Trust engineers, the scientists. And again, uh, scientists is new, science is neutral in these things and can uh, find a way out of our problem. But then our medieval institutions come in the way. That's what one of the reasons uh, religion is part of uh, uh, my story. And uh, uh, some of the protagonists speak directly about the issue of uh, overpopulation. So reading eco-fiction will stir people to, to think, to contemplate and provoke action. Uh, it took uh, over two decades to write this book, Professor. Have you got another book in you? Uh, if I were to write another book, it would be how to write a novel <laughs> in less than 25 years. Uh, no. There will be a, no other uh, novel uh, from me. Uh, recently, just before submitting the book to publication, a friend saw me at uh, a cafe working still on the book and uh, uh, asked me how it was going. I said, well, look, uh, 21 years and still not finished. She said, my cousin's book was published posthumously. I said, you're giving me hope. <laughs> you made it. Look, Professor George Paxanos, thank you so much for your time today. And we really wish you luck with the book and getting out its message. Thank you, Julia. Thank you.